What's up weirdos? This one is kind of like actually insane. I can't believe it. this is real. This woman, Lisa Mia, she's a TikToker slash author who has been promoting her book online using the, early in the video, I might get demonetized if I say it, brutal M-U-R-D-E-R -E of her husband for TikTok clout like to promote her book. And even on its face value, she just seems like a really, it's bad. But when we get into this, uh, there's some other things that have been brought up about her and the whole M-U-R, you know, that put everything into such a worse light. She might be an actual villain. I know that I say, oh, there's nuance in every situation. And I'm sure there's, yeah, there's plenty of nuance here, but let's get into it because there's no way you're gonna end this video and think that she's doing anything you know, right. So I wanna start with her most viral video that really blew up and brought this to a lot of people's attention. She is in a Starbucks drive through line and well, let's just watch it. We like to pay for the person behind me. Today is um, National Day of Remembrance for homicide victims and my husband was brutally killed. I just wanted to give some love today. That's to just a random person in a Starbucks line, yeah, yeah with the very emotional music that's in the background. And we gotta remember, she's putting this emotional music in the background while saying to a stranger, probably like a high schooler working at Starbucks, not this is National Day of Remembrance and I'd like to pay for the person behind me, but my husband was brutally, why are you saying that? I gotta be careful with the language I use because I don't want this video to get, you know, but when I say brutally, just understand that the word that follows that is the thing that you call a group of crows. Let's watch that again. This is, Crazy. Actually like to pay for the person behind me. Today is um, National Day of Remembrance for homicide victims and my husband was brutally killed. So um, I just wanted to give some love today. Did you need to add the brutally, you know, was that necessary? No, but obviously this is like a wild ass post. So it blew up a bunch. But the other things that she's saying in her other videos are really the problem here. When the grief of losing my husband becomes too great, I talk to him, I'd say, we can't grow old together anymore, but we can grow timeless. She's putting the Braveheart soundtrack right there while she's giving that type of speech to the point of, as we will see now. And in our published poems and in my completed book, Ready for Print, our story and your love and how wonderfully and powerfully you did so can be memorialized forever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she has deleted that video and she's deleted a lot of other videos. So unfortunately there's only like some small clips of them, but this one, you know, it cuts off, but we'll watch. My husband was brutally murdered in one of Flora's most gruesome homicides, answering- Yeah, you see that? My husband was brutally in one of gr gruesome, uh, answering questions about my book. What? Literally using her husband's horrible, horrible for clout and to promote her book. That would be like me saying, in honor of my wife's tragic, brutal, gruesome, horrible, terrifying passing, I just want you to know that these necklaces are available on weirdothings.com. This necklace specifically is my favorite one. It's made with real natural freshwater pearls and real natural tiger's eye stones. The clasp is sterling silver. It's really high quality and it's got a weight to it that you know means it's good. Sometimes in these videos when I'm so far back, it's hard to see just, you know, the actual quality of it, but I swear to God, these are very high quality. And I'm working on taking some pictures and videos to really showcase the product. So go to weirdothings.com and buy them today. Especially this design in honor of my late wife. And then you find out that I'm talking about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and I don't even know Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That's what she's doing. Now, what if I told you that not only was she posting constant videos like this. My husband was murdered in one of the most gruesome homicides in Florida. And this. Today um, is the anniversary of when my husband was laid to rest after he was brutally killed. And this, my husband was brutally huh, and lit on fire, the horror, huh, you know? Not only is she saying all of that, what if I also told you that that wasn't her husband? Yes, let's just sit on that for a second. That's not her husband. Yeah. Also, it happened 13 years ago and she's only now doing this because only now is her book coming out. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so much more to talk about this. There's so many more layers, but I do have to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Raycon. Right here, I've got Raycon's wireless everyday earbuds. And I gotta be honest with you, 
I love them. I like the case, they're high quality, the earbuds themselves are very high quality. Okay, let me be real. I've tried other wireless earbuds and every time I go to work out, they always flop out of my ears and they get dirty and messy and bumped up. Raycons never happens to me. They fit so comfortably, they lock into my ears in a, such a comfortable but like secure way and the audio quality is really, really good. Premium level, amazing. I was shocked when I first tried them because the price point is so much better than other earbuds for the exact same level of quality. And over this past year, Raycon has expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech. Also, they have a 32 hour battery life. And I'm not the only one who loves them. They have 78,000 five star reviews. For real, they are earbuds that you try once and you genuinely understand why so many people are talking about them. They are very good, especially for me when I'm working out. Because again, I work, I'm so, I'm so big. So to celebrate Raycon turning six, hurry to buyraycon.com slash Cooper and use code birthday to get 20 to 40% off site wide. So again, thank you so much to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to Lisa Mia and that. I'm just going to read what happened to her husband really quickly. She's not exaggerating when she's saying it was brutal and like, yeah. Trigger warning. Skip to this part of the video if you don't want to hear what happened. I'm not going to get into details, but he was repeatedly stabbed and then while still alive, set on fire in a trash can. V like terrible. And then look at this video that she posted. And deleted, by the way. But she posted this. Must be confusing not being legally recognized as your partner's spouse. Husband, wife, partner, spouse. These are not just legal titles with paperwork. They are only legal titles when there is the paperwork, Lisa Mia. And maybe if you don't legally have the title of this person's wife, maybe you shouldn't be claiming that to promote your book of poetry. Just maybe. Also, reportedly, people have been reaching out to the victim's real family asking if this Lisa Mia actually had a connection with, you know, the victim and seeing what the whole situation actually is. And let me just read this for you. A family member, a cousin of the victim's, had answered this person and told them that they had not spoken to this woman, Lisa Mia, the TikToker, in years, and that the video upset many of the family members and that she was only doing this for attention. This is coming reportedly from within the family. I believe it because all of her videos and the fact that they actually weren't married and the fact that she's doing this for attention and the fact that she's trying to promote her book and the fact that she is wildly sensationalizing it online for just apparently the shock factor of it, it's nuts. To do something like this, you have to genuinely have no empathy for the person that you're talking about. Like, it's unbelievable. 13 years later, you're publishing a book of poetry about what you're mourning and then to promote the book of poetry Poetry, you lie, exaggerate, sensationalize, and make the entire tragedy about yourself and your book of poetry that people can buy. That is snaky, evil BS. So when you know all that, and then you see a video like this that she posts, it's very hard to not despise her. After a lot of self-reflection and consideration, I am really scared. <laughs> about my decision, but I wanted to share with you guys and get your feedback. Now, by the way, you can be happy after a tragedy. You can be happy after, you know, mourning this. It's a little bit weird to be grinning ear to ear while you're talking about this book of poetry written about your not husband, who you're saying is your husband, whose family members don't want you to be doing stuff like this, and who think that you're doing this for clout and to capitalize off of it for attention, and you aren't even related to this man's life. Like, there's so much, like, wrong about this, and she's grinning ear to ear, just so excited about her book of poetry, Juliet Lives. In the comments, I already ran to Amazon hoping it was there already. I can't wait to buy this book. I'm hooked. Please let us know when it's out. You can do it. You're so inspirational. Is it inspirational? to find somebody who you dated 13 years ago and then write a book of poetry about them, claim that they're your husband online, really sensationalize it to strangers constantly and genuinely be trauma dumping on innocent just retail workers. And then also it's not actually your husband and you are lying and this is all for attention. Is that inspirational? Is it? I would say no. I'd say that that's actually evil. Yes, yes, yes. I'll be looking forward to reading. Also, I can't read yes, yes, yes without thinking of, you know, the TikTok live NPCs. Yes, yes, yes. Manipulation so good. Yeah, that's that's insane. And her response, how wonderful. I'm sobbing again. Thank you for your love and support. So she is replying to a lot 
of comments. But then if you go into the comments of videos not about her promoting her book, she is strikingly responding to a lot less. She's strikingly obvious how less she's responding. I don't know what I'm saying. Like, look, 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 no response, no response, no response. Maybe it's because the comments are like this. I can't wait to see your beautiful wedding pics, obviously being sarcastic, because there was no wedding. Girl, that wasn't even your man. Thank you, the vamptress. Oh my god. It's a national test of the, of the weather alert system. Okay, I guess it's okay. This is the video that these comments are on. I'm seeing this term a lot. Trauma dump, trauma dumping, oversharing. Does she think that she's in a movie? She does think that she's in a movie because she thinks that she is, I guess, in a movie, yeah, there we go. She's acting so like, I am the main character. But in order to be the main character, she has to self-manipulate into believing that that was her husband, when apparently he wasn't even dating her at the time of his passing. I'm not gonna make that claim for sure. There's a lot of people who were coming out talking about how like, apparently they dated in the past, but he had moved on at the time of his passing. People saying that his parents have told uh, people, and there's like, there's like a lot of a story of a story of a story. I personally don't feel comfortable making those claims, but I will say there's so much smoke about her not really at all being in uh, his life at the time of his passing, not even being in his obituary. To the point that I think it's not crazy to say her sensationalizing and exaggerating the the nature of their relationship, explicitly so by calling him her husband when he actually, like, legally was not. Plus, like, family members, like, apparently, like, there's big reports. There's so much about that that I think we can confidently say that she is not who she says she is. Her relationship to him is not what she claims it to be. And I really, really, really don't have a hard time believing that she was actually his ex. Like, I don't, I'm trying to say, I, 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 I think that giving her the benefit of the doubt does not make sense based on everything about her and everything that she has said and who she is at her core as a person. So yeah, she's just a uh, villain. And this whole main character speech she's giving about trauma dumping. I'm seeing a lot of people bringing that up. Trauma. Duh. It feels more like a unhinged villain speech at the end of a Marvel movie where you're like, Oh, so you just made somebody complex for one scene and then said, Yeah, but they're the bad guy, so they, they gotta say something stupid. But she is just the stupid part of it. I don't want to call her. Yeah, it's okay. Your trauma or loss, your feelings, they're not a burden to me. Oh, oh, okay. That's not what anybody was saying, though, but okay. Your trauma and your loss, anything you share here, it's not trauma dumping. You're welcome here. Hey, okay, that's your comment section. That's your profile. That's not the policy of a 17-year-old bisexual girl who works at a Starbucks. If you're getting your oat milk latte from a 17-year-old bisexual girl from Starbucks, you don't also have the right to trauma dump on her just because you're cool if people do it to you. Hey, this place right here, it's a safe place for you to punch me in the face as hard as you can. And that's why it's okay that I went out to a kid's park, rounded up 17 toddlers, and just started wailing on them. It's okay. That's not how that works, Jan. By the way, Ashton Kutcher, shockingly bad guy. We're not gonna talk about that right now, but uh, thanks Jan. Just made me think of that. So yeah, I don't like her. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there it is. That's the video. Hey, I don't I don't like her. And now you have been informed on maybe the most just I don't know. I she's I she's just uh, she's just a bad, you know. Yeah. But hey, after this, at least now you know that there is a really bad person out there who's promoting themselves on TikTok and lying constantly. It seems like a lot of people do that on TikTok. Gotta get that sorted out. Oh my god. Anyways, thank you for watching this video with me. Please subscribe. People who do stuff like this, it's like a criminal level of like lack of self-awareness where like, do you not realize who you are right now? You actually think that what you're doing is okay. And she's talking about it as if she's like some victim in a situation where 13 years ago, her ex-boyfriend had a terrible, terrible passing and she can then use that to promote her book of